All right, guys. So if nothing else, even if you like don't really get the whole TBD thing and it all just seems kind of weird, if nothing else, at least this class should be helpful in terms of just like planning out your project and how that's going to progress. Um, but the next thing we're going to do is take that English you wrote and turn it into some actual functioning JavaScripty stuff, actual JavaScript. Um, and to do that, we need to install this thing called Jasmine Node. So please uh, run this command right here, npm install g jasmine node. Might take a, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter where you write it because it's installing it globally. If you didn't have the dash g, it would just install it in the folder you're currently in. But with the dash g, it just installs it globally on your computer, so it's available everywhere. I've already done it, but I'm going to do it anyway. This cool little loading bar, we didn't have this for a long time. It's actually a really new thing. Back in my day. All right, once you've done that CD into the project folder that you made earlier, if you didn't make a project folder, then go ahead and make one now. I'm going to just remake that snowman builder folder. Yes, yep. We're not going to be we're we're not going to be screwing anything up, and if you do get merge conflicts, then. Um, but you know that's a fair point. If you want, you can do this in a separate folder. Um, but I would say just go ahead and do it in your project folder. Okay, cool. So uh, let's see. Make dear snowman builder. I'm just going to pretend this is my project. All right, and then inside that, make a folder called spec. So I'm inside Snowman Builder, now I'm going to make a folder called spec. So my entire folder looks like this right now, not very exciting. Yours probably has a bit more stuff in it. Now we're going to create a file, uh, and the file should be named the name of your model. Uh, so just pick one model. We're going to start with just one model. Uh, and then name your file the name of that model. So if it's a movie model, you would call it movie-spec. If it's a puppy model, you would do puppy-spec. Here I'm doing snowman, so I'm going to do snowman-spec. Touch spec snowman spec.js. So here's my project folder so far. And once you've done that, you should be able to run jasmine-node spec and end up with something like this. So I'm going to pause there until we're all caught up to this point. Uh, if anyone's having technical trouble, then let me know. Does anyone have any problems? Everyone get this? The green? Please? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do you have to what? Oh, yeah, you missed that step. So you need to do this npm install g jasmine node. All right, so this should look an awful lot like rspec, where you run something and then you get this green text. Um, we're going to start making this look a little bit JavaScripty. So, So, uh, Go ahead and copy the text you wrote before, so everything you wrote earlier just now, and just go ahead and paste it into this snowman spec uh, file. I know you didn't write it as JavaScript. That's perfectly fine. I am fully intending for this to throw syntax errors at us when we start actually doing it. So for me, I'm going to copy these things into it. So I'm just taking the English I wrote before and pasting it in here. We get something like this. It's plain old English. I'm not doing anything else to it. It doesn't matter. I'm doing it in terminal just because I'm fancy. But you can do it in Atom if you want. No, uh, don't don't do Vim. Don't do Vim unless you know how to do Vim. Okay, fine. I'll do it in Atom. <laughs> oh, you guys. Yeah, you can try to do Vim. 
That would be good luck with that. All right, cool. So here I am. Copy, paste, bam. That's it. And then when you run Jasmine node spec, you should get some kind of a syntax error. Yeah, syntax error, unexpected string. Uh, so it should not have, oh, you go away, go away, go away. Uh, yeah, you should get something like this. So we've pasted the tests in there. We have them as English. Now we need to make them JavaScript so that we don't get syntax errors like this. So that's going to be the next step. Um, a completed Jasmine file is going to look something like this. So let me rearrange this snowman stuff so that it follows the same syntax. Ah, I'm not going to do it in Vim as much as I want to. All right, so describe, I'm going to, let's see, if this isn't already in double quotes, I'm going to put this uh, a snowman in double quotes. Everything aside from describe and it should be in double quotes. And I'm going to put that in there, make it a function, and put all this stuff inside it. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this describe down here. Make it a function, put this it inside it. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for all of the its. So I'm going to ask all of you guys to do this in a second, so feel free to do it along with me if you'd like. Uh, but it's basically just putting parentheses, double quotes around things, and also putting function at the end of each line. It should have a carrot nose. Chris, you have a question? Oh, uh, maybe you had everything like written as comments or something. Also, make sure you save it. And then this is my very last one. Oops. All right, so this is my end result. I took my English and I did three things. I put double quotes and parentheses around it, and then I put a function at the end of each line. And there I am, all done. You'll know you've done it correctly if you run your, uh, if you run Jasmine node spec again and you don't get any errors. Also, notice that something has changed here, and I'll come around and fix any issues in just a second. Notice that uh, what has changed here is that now this thing has those four dots and it says four tests. So uh, just like in RSpec, whenever you write it, that's considered a test, it's the exact same thing in Jasmine. Anytime you write it, it's considered a test. And so I have four its in my code, uh, and as a result, I have four tests in here. They're all passing because there's nothing in here that says they shouldn't pass. Um, so these tests aren't really good for anything. They don't actually test anything. But at least I know I don't have any syntax errors. So I'm going to take a second there. Uh, is any written or hand here having uh, trouble getting this thing set up? Uh, anyone else raise your hand if you're getting syntax trouble? Okay, then go ahead and keep on working on this. Uh, I'll say take three minutes, eh, five minutes, to finish writing all this stuff as functioning JavaScript, okay? So we're not writing anything inside these its. Uh, it's just making it look like this. Mm 
these phantom dots, that or else is not going to recognize the file. And you see here how it says there aren't any texts in the user's text. You should get an answer. Yeah, because this stuff isn't in the JavaScript, it needs to be in the JavaScript. It's okay if you don't get all of them rewritten within these three and a half minutes. I know a lot, some of you have a whole bunch of tests. Um, and if that happens, I would say just comment out the ones that you haven't gotten to yet. Um, but do get it to a point so that you can run it and have it not fail. So by the end of these five minutes, you should get at least a couple of green dots over here. Yeah, you're just looking on one model. Uh, if you finish early, you can start on the other model too if you want. But I just want to get something to work with in here. There's got to be a way to make it print out the line number. Let me see if I can get that. Give me just one second. Well, that's really strange. It looks like it doesn't have something built in to show you the line number. Okay, guys, please wrap up where you are, uh, and then I'll come around and help you guys with any errors that you're having. Um, let's see, I wonder if this will work.
Uh, is anyone getting syntax errors or are their, their code not working? Okay. happens to you where you get smart quotes. Um, I actually don't really know how to write a smart quote, but it's where these things, if they look a little bit slanted or curvy or something, then it's a smart quote. A smart quote is a special character that is different from these regular boring double quotes right here. If that happens, uh, if you're an atom, you can do a command F and let's see, I don't have any smart quotes, so I'm just going to replace every you with star 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 press a click find then I replace all and there we go so you can do the same thing with that <laughs> looks like I'm swearing all over the place now um, but yeah you could do the same thing with this just copy the quote paste it in here find and then replace all the smart quote is I wish I knew how to write one Maybe like, yeah um, Wait, let me see. Let me see if I can get it. That's not it. Huh. Well, uh, Samir, it's something like this, I guess. Yeah, like how those are all curvy. All right, anyone still getting syntax errors? I like can <laughs> troubleshoot. Okay, cool. So I'm going to keep on going. Uh, so we have some tests in here that, well, they they don't really pass, but they don't fail just because there's nothing in them to make them fail. Uh, let's see, Jasmine node spec. There it is. Um, so one thing I like to do is I like to do Jasmine node dash dash verbose spec. And what this does is it just prints out all this stuff. So instead of printing out dots, it prints everything out in English, which I like because I can read it, uh, and it also shows you how long each test took, which is, I don't know, kind of cool, I guess. Um, but it runs the test the exact same way, it just changes the output a little bit. Any questions so far? Cool. We've mostly just been like typing stuff in, so. 
Uh, okay, so now let's see. We have updated your code so that it has the proper syntax. So let's talk about what's actually going on uh, inside this code over here. So you guys have probably heard of test suites before, or at least seen that referred somewhere. Uh, this describe block is considered a suite. A suite is a collection of tests, or more accurately, it's a collection of specs. A spec is these things. Each it is a spec. So uh, a spec is basically the same thing as a test or part of a test. Quick question on test. It's called a spec because it comes from, anyone know? Short for what? Not spectacular, but good guess. Specification, right. Specification comes from specific. And so that's all there because you're testing a specific part of your app, a specific component or a specific method or something. You're testing a specific thing. Um, but yeah, a spec is the same thing as like a part of a test. Chris? Yeah, so a suite is everything inside the scribe. And so this is sort of like a suite within a suite. Um, but when people talk about a test suite, they're really just talking about a collection of tests. Uh, we're not going to take a break, I'm afraid, because we already sort of took one. Um, so these are, these tests, again, they don't really pass because there's nothing to make them pass, but they don't fail. Um, so that's what we need to do next, is figure out how to make these tests actually do something. And we do that with expectations in Jasmine. So let's see, what did it look like in, I don't even remember what it looked like in our spec. Wasn't it something like, what did it look like in our spec? Was it expect? I'm going to be all mixed up. Is it expect? Yeah, it's like expect Olaf to, to be, I don't know, something like that. Um, and it's a similar syntax in here, except you have to use parentheses and stuff. Um, but what that is going to look like is something like this. So I'll just copy that over here. It should have a name. There we go. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating this variable, and then I'm saying what I expect should happen in order for this test to pass. That is, I will consider this test to be successful if this expectation is met. And you can kind of read this like English too. I'm expecting Olaf's name to be defined. I'm expecting Olaf to have a name. I'm expecting the snowman to have a name. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So uh, expect is the only word you're going to use over here. But over here, this thing is called a matcher. And there are lots of different kinds of matcher. There's to be defined. There's, I think, to just to be. Uh, let's see. There are a whole bunch of them. So to be, not to be, to equal, to match, so on and so forth. So there are lots of different matches that you can use, just like in our spec. Uh, so I'm expecting Olaf's name to be defined. Uh, if I was going to say I expect Olaf's name to be Olaf, then I would do something like expect Olaf.name to be Olaf. That doesn't really make for a very good test because I've already defined it up here, but I could do that if I wanted to. Um, but this is the one I'm using for right now. So again, we have the X, this whole thing is the expectation and this part is the matching. And here, this is the thing we're testing. And over here, this is the thing we're testing against. Any questions about that syntax or about how things are set up in there? Samir? Uh, I have a question about that. Why? What would it be like if we give another test and then you just get the name and then just get another test? Mm -hmm. so right now you're just checking to see the pattern name, right? Yeah. So we need another test to say that name equal Olaf. Oh, yeah, good question. So one thing that should be noted is that it is a function, right? Like this thing right here is a function. Uh, and just like any function, this variable is not going to be accessible outside that function. So if I do something like should have a name matching the name you gave it, that's a terrible test, but whatever. Uh, then I would have to redefine Olaf. So I would do var Olaf equals new 
snowman Olaf, and now I would say expect Olaf.name to be Olaf. And that should work just fine. But I'm going to have to redefine var Olaf for each one. In a bit, we'll talk about not having to do that. You remember those like before each, before all things from our spec, and you can do the exact same thing in Jasmine. But we'll get to that point in a little bit. Um, for right now, I just want to try testing these. I'm going to run them and see what will happen. Uh, so, who prediction? Is this test going to pass or not? I'm asking that to probably give you the answer, but is it going to pass? No. Why not, Matt? Yeah, exactly. So if I run this, I should say something like, snowman is not defined. And it's exactly right. I haven't defined snowman anywhere. So I'm trying to do something with new snowman, but snowman isn't defined anywhere inside that file. So uh, I need to define snowman in here, and I need to link it in here somehow. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, let's see. This looks good. I'm going to create a new file called snowman.js. Actually, I'll put it inside my models folder. I feel like that's a little bit more appropriate. Models. I can put it anywhere I want, but I'll put it in here. Snowman.js. And then there we go. This is my awesome snowman model right here. Uh, so now I need to link in this snowman file inside snowman spec. What function am I going to use in order to link in another file? What do we use in Node? Require. Exactly. So I'm going to need to require this file. So I'm going to do var snowman equals require and then the path to that file. Models snowman. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to try running this again. All right, so now it's the same thing. That's weird. Why is this still? Say what? Oh, whoops. My bad. Thank you. Good catch. But still failing. Um, these are still passing because, again, they're not testing anything, but this stuff is still failing. The problem is somewhere in here. Anyone know what the problem is? This is a sort of a tricky nodeism. Brendan? <coughs> yeah, I need to export it. I need to do module.exports equals snowman. So let's talk about module.exports for a second. The way things work in Node is that anytime you require a file, Node is going to read through that whole file, but it's only going to sort of return something out of that file. It's only going to get something out of that file if you have a module.exports inside. If I don't have a module.exports, if I do like console.log, subgang, then it's still going to run that. should see subgang. Yep, so it still runs that, but it doesn't actually get anything out of this file. The only way it gets anything out of this file is with module.exports. Module.exports is like the return statement for a file. Like if you were to think of this file as being a function, module.exports would be the return. So I need to return something out of this file in order to be able to access it elsewhere in the app. But now that I've done that, I think I should be able to run this and it'll work. And there we go. And now all my tests pass. Uh, so these still don't do anything. I have to go in next and start adding in expectations for those tests. But my preliminary tests work. So any questions about this part, about what's going on here? Brendan? Yep, it really is exactly like return. With return, you can only return one thing. Um, so if you want to return multiple things, you'd have to put them inside an array or an object or something. Other questions? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. 
Yeah, so every time it runs this new snowman, uh, I mean, this is just regular old JavaScript. It's executing this just like regular old JavaScript. Um, this expects to be stuff. It's sort of a fancy way of writing if Olaf.name equals Olaf, then test.pass or something. I don't know. But it's just a fancy way of writing that. This is just plain old JavaScript just written in a weird way. In the exact same way that our spec is just plain old Ruby just written in a slightly different way. So if I go here inside Olaf and then I do console log hi there, I'm name, it should run that once for every snowman that's created. So let's see if it does that. And there we go. I get two, hi there, I'm Olaf. Um, because it does var Olaf equals new snowman two times in here. So it's actually running that code. It's actually doing stuff with it. If this was hooked up to a database, it would be actually saving stuff to the database. Again, in the same way that our spec did. Other questions? Okay, so next what I'd like you guys to do is start writing in some expectations. Um, but before we do that, I just want to talk about like sort of what this whole process is. Let's see, I'm not sure I didn't miss anything. Nope. So uh, the whole way test-driven development works um, is this process called red-green refactor. I think I mentioned that before in the RSpec class as well, this red-green refactor thing. Um, what that means is the, the whole philosophy of test-driven development is instead of writing your tests after you write your code, you write your tests before you write your code. And you use your tests as sort of an outline to figure out how your code should go next, what you should write. It's sort of like Jeopardy, where uh, instead of Alex asking the contestants a question and then giving him an answer, he gives them an answer and they have to ask the question that would have that answer. So like he says, you know, this instructor's name is Robin, and then the contestants would have to say, who is the coolest instructor at WDI? <laughs> um, which is very much backwards from what we're used to. I mean, it intuitively makes a lot more sense to write your code first and then write the test afterward. But I don't want to do that because I don't want to keep continuing to work on my app. Writing code retroactively is just really annoying. It feels like you're playing catch up and it feels like there's no point. Whereas when you write the test beforehand, not only does it force you to actually write your tests, it also really helps you plan out what your project, uh, what your project or your app or whatever is gonna look like. Doing TDD, I can guarantee will always have a better result than not doing TDD. The difference is, I would say the biggest difference is where you're putting your energy. Are you putting it in at the start, or are you putting it in later on when you have to quit and refresh and do dickmas again and again and again? Do you want to do it first, or do you want to do it later and much more spread out and probably much more? So the whole process here is first you just think about what your app is, what do you want to accomplish, in the exact same way that we did in this class. And then I would say just write that out in English. The next step is to turn that into actual tests. Pending tests. Pending tests are tests that don't actually test anything. They just sort of sit there. After that, the next step is to make your first test fail. That is, write in the expectations. Write in what you would expect in order to make that test pass. It's going to fail because at this point you haven't written any actual code yet. You haven't written any part of your app yet. First you write the expectation, then you write the code to suit that expectation. And then you would just keep going from there. So you write a failing test, you write the code to make it pass, and then you move on to the next test. You write an expectation that will make it fail, then you write the code that will make it pass, and then you move on to the next test. People talk about TDD crack uh, because you like have all these tiny little tests and they're all sort of like little mini problems to solve. Little Lego pieces to put together. Instead of this big giant thing that you have to worry about. Doing all these little tests, it makes it much more fun to go through them from test to test. So when we talk about red green refactor, we talk about writing failing tests first, then making them pass, and then so on and so forth. Um, and again, normally you would do this one test at a time. Uh, in this class, we're not going to do that. 
because uh, we just don't really have time for it. Although we might, we've got a lot of time left. Um, but yeah, generally you don't want to write all of your expectations first. You don't want to write all of your expectations first and then go back and make all of them pass. You want to write one expectation, make it pass, and go on to the next one. So question for you guys, why is that? Why wouldn't I want to write all of my expectations first, have a whole bunch of failing tests, and then go back and make them pass? Really? Yeah, that's part of it. Plus. Yeah, that's another part of it. Yeah, so sort of that code consistency thing. If one thing makes another thing fail. Um, what else? You have to put something a little more human and a little less code. So, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Requirements for your project might change. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. It makes you a lot happier to see one passing test and then just go on to the next one. Imagine you look at an entire wall of red failing tests and then you think, oh man, I have to make all of these pass. That sounds pretty dreadful to me. If I see a whole bunch of pending tests and then one failing test, I'm like, okay, I can handle that. But if I see an entire wall of red failing tests, I'm like, geez, like, kill me now. There's no way I'm going to be able to get through all of this. And so, like, doing it one at a time, you know, it's another one of those things where it doesn't make your app run any faster. It doesn't do any of that stuff. It's just to help you as a human being. Just like naming your variables appropriately. It doesn't make your app run any faster or work any better. It's just to help you, as a human being, interact with your computer. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to show you what the final snowman specs would look like. It would look something like this. And here we go. So it should have a name. It should have a carrot nose. Uh, so the carrot nose, that's testing this features thing right here. You can see it has carrot nose and stick arms. Oops. So we're expecting that array to contain carrot nose. So to contain, there's another matcher right there. Uh, looks like we actually have four different matchers on here. To be defined, to contain, to be, and not to be, Hamlet style. Uh, and then same thing down here. Expect Olaf hug to be, I like warm hugs. I expect Frosty Hug to be, oh, not to be, I like warm hugs. Uh, these, most of these should fail. Oh, and that's because I just copied and pasted it. And this is actually in my models folder. Yeah, so things are going pretty well except for this last one. So this is the last one that I would have to do. I would have to add in this last little bit in order to make all of my tests pass. Um, but I'm almost there. Conveniently, I have the code for it down here. Yeah, but we'll get to that. Um, so what I'd like you guys to do now is I'd like you to just add expectations to your code. So how is this going to work? Presumably, again, you don't have any actual code for your app written so far. So what your job is, is to think about what sort of what you would actually test, what code you would actually run in order to make one of these tests pass. I would encourage you to not start off by writing all of this stuff. Instead, I would encourage you to uh, just do something like, like expect the snowman to have a name, and then just go from there. How would you write this into something more codey? Maybe something like expect snowman.name to exist. I'm not sure how to do to exist, so I'll go look that up in the Jasmine documentation. Expect snowman.name to be defined. Okay, and now I can make that a little bit more JavaScripty. Expect snowman name to be defined. Looks pretty good. And now I can uncomment that, and that should actually run. But if you start writing it as JavaScript first, I think it's a lot more difficult than if you write it as English first. Worry about doing it in English for all of your tests and then go back and write it as JavaScript for all of your tests. Writing it as English first is going to make it much easier. 
So we're going to do this in the same process that we did before, uh, which is where I'm going to ask you to take five minutes to write some expectations and then meet up with the same group that you had before. And this time, just take five minutes per person to uh, talk about what you wrote. Okay? So for five minutes, I'm going to ask you to write expectations. Uh, see, I would say try to get like, maybe try to get four expectations in there as more than just English. Uh, maybe try to get four as actual JavaScript. And then we'll meet up with the rest of your group and each person, you'll spend five minutes walking through each person's code. Any questions about that? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start the timer. And again, take these five minutes to just start writing some expectations, and I'll let you know when